Hi guys, it's Botson here, back with Botson Racing. And today is day two um, of the preview and selections with tips um, I've got for Cheltenham. Um, bit of a disappointing day yesterday. Um, shame with Tell Me Something Girl falling and getting brought down by Indefatigable. And again, Dice Art in the first and the Supreme getting um, a bit um, a bit fiery in the pro rings, going off early in a false start and obviously falling. Who knows what would have happened in those two races if whether uh, Dice Art would have won. I, don't, I do think Constitution Hill will be um, would have been the winner anyway. Um, I think if uh, he does go to the champion hurdle next year, I think Connolly Suckle versus Constitution Hill will be a class race to watch. Um, however, a few places in Kilcarit in the end with Honeysuckle with winning as well did save us a bit. Um, Bell X1 looked really good in the Boodles. Um, a bit of a mess of a ride, I would say, by Harry Cobden um, switching her. Uh, should, sorry, him, switching him, and then sort of hung, hanging right-handed um, down to the middle before the uh, finishing line. Again, nice little winner, nice little each way um, prices, and again, Zana here at top three, each way at 28 to one, looked pretty good as well. So, realistically, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but I just felt a bit let down by Tell Me Something Girl and Dice Art, but you know, it happens, it's sharp, I mean, you've got to get used to it. So hopefully we've got a better day coming up for you guys. Um, so hopefully we can give you some winners. Um, in the first race tomorrow, as in day two, we've got the Ballymore. Um, no point other tipping up better than the horse than Sir Gerhard here. Sir Gerhard just wins. Is it worth putting a bet on? Probably. Um, not as a single, maybe. I'd say stick it in a couple of ackers. Again, I'll, I'll let you know what um, sort of accumulators I've got, what doubles, what trebles, what tricksies. But yeah, I definitely think Sagarhad just wins this race easily. I might have a small poke on Iron Maximus, considering Nico, um, Nico de Boinville's in good form and Nicky Ender's yard is flying at the moment. Um, so yeah, maybe a small poke on Iron Maximus at 14s. So moving swifting on to the second race, um, that's the Brown Advisory. I think this race is wide open for Braisman's game. Gallop and Shum Shum should have gone here, going up to three miles, but it's ended up going to the Turners. Um, so it left this race wide open for Braylon's game at 11 to 4. Um, I think this is Paul Yickel's only hope of getting a Cheltenham winner. Um, I think it's the only race you can think Paul Nichols can win. Um, the only problem is Paul Nichols' yard isn't in the greatest form. However, his top horses seem to be fine. So hopefully Braysman's game can run well. He's not lost all season, so hopefully he can't lose this season <laughs> going to Cheltenham. Um, the main danger is a Hoy Senor. Um, yes, he's beaten the Hoist and before. Um, the home press, don't think, has got the potential to be anywhere near Braysman's game. Um, the one of interest at 14 to 1 is Farouk Doelen. Um, with Elliot, Gordon Elliott, I think. Um, yeah, so definitely one to keep in mind. Um, came second to Statler. Obviously, Statler's gone and won the national hunt yesterday. Um, I definitely think Farouk Allen's got the chance to, you know, get up into Group 1 company. I think it's definitely got a chance of winning. I think he came second in a Group 1 um, not so long ago in heavy ground. And I think definitely Farouk Allen at 14 to 1 is a definitely a good each way bet. Um, so that's the Brown Advisory. Moving on to the third race of the day, which is a Coral Cup handicap. Um, there's two in here I do like at big prices. And one is Mars Harper. Um, that's with Gordon Elliott as well. I definitely think that horse is well handicapped off a mark of 137. Uh, definitely well in the weights. Uh, the run, penultimate runner, I should say, definitely caught the eye. Um, definitely made some good ground on soft and came second to Good Time Johnny, who's then gone and won um, at the Dublin Fe Re Racing Festival but, uh, in front of right time, right place. Um, definitely form's been franked by that. So I think Mars Harper's well in the weights, definitely got a good chance at 25 to 1. Um, some places giving you six up to eight places, I think, with Skybet. Um, the other one at big price is Commander of Fleet. Again, with Gordon Elliott. Gordon Elliott's got quite a few runners in here. But yeah, I think this horse definitely has a potential chance of winning. Um, even if it doesn't win, I, mean, I think it's definitely got a chance of placing. Uh, we've got Shane Fitzgerald on board, um, which claims five, which is always a good thing. And um, yes, he's off a a good mark of 152 um, but this horse has been rated a lot higher 
So he's definitely down to a winnable mark, whether that winnable mark is in this race off a handicap with horses that are more weighted than, less weighted than him. I don't know, but I think for a horse that's running the Supreme before, coming fourth, run against Classical Dream, you know, and the likes of Stratum, Royal Kahala, all these great horses that, he's, uh, that Commander of Fleets run against, I still think he's got a good good mark. Um, yeah, his recent three runs haven't been great, but his last run was decent um, in a Group 2, um, coming third. So I definitely think he's got a chance. Um, wouldn't be too keen on that one, but I think Mars... Um, Mars Harper is definitely the one I'd be, be uh, on here. Um, I will have a small small poke on Capron to win. Um, being fourth behind West Cork, um, who's going for the county hurdle um, in a group in a Grade Three here, uh, so definitely within a chance of winning this thing off a mark of one forty. Um, well in the weights again, this thing um, knows how to win, so I definitely think in the handicap of a one mark of one forty is is a good chance with Aidan Coleman on board. So moving on to the feature race of the day, the 3.30, which is the champion chase. Um, can't see Shishkin losing, 10 to 11, um, even evens during some part of the day yesterday. Can't see this losing. Um, I'd whack this in a couple of acres, um, maybe in a treble, um, a definitely a double with St. Gerhard. That's probably the double of the day, maybe with a treble with um, Braceman Game can see those three definitely winning tomorrow. Um, one to mention in this race is put the kettle on. A big price, the only mare in the field, uh, part of the Henry de Bromhead yard. Won the Arkle last year at 16 to one and even won the mare's chase the year before. Loves Cheltenham, but the previous two runs uh, she's had this season haven't been good at all. Um, really, really bad runs. Um, miles off um, Newbury Negra. Um, yeah, it just didn't look good, but you know she loves uh, Cheltenham. She loves it around there, and she obviously got the £7 claim against all the horses being a mare, obviously. Um, she loves Cheltenham, so I'm just hoping for one of those days where she just turns up and runs a cracker. Um, again, um, you know what the, it does to horses, the Cheltenham roar and the excitement, the buzz, um, and hopefully she lives up to that. So yeah, those are two. Shishkin um, at 10 to 11, and put the kettle on at 22 to 1 each way. Now into the 410, which is the cost country. All I have to say is Tiger Roll will win. Um, I can't see it losing. Absolutely crewed up last time, beating Easy Land, I think, about, by about 10, uh, about 20 lengths so or so. Uh, one to mention is Shady Operator. Um, at a good price of 11 to 1, I think you can get currently. Uh, that would be the main danger, I'd say. Don't like Delta Works form. Um, don't really like Prengard as much. I did recently, um, but I've just sort of gone off of it now. Um, the the fact that JP said he was unlikely to run here made me put a bit of doubt in how good Prengard is. Why is he questioning going, you know, and that sort of thing. So I've, I've gone off sort of Prengard and I think Shady Operator is the one to sort of have a poke at with Tiger Roll. So those will be the two. So Tiger Roll at 13 to 8 and Shady Operator at 11 to 1 each way. The next is the handicap, uh, the Grand Annual. Um, another tough race to call. Uh, no real value here. Um, I think I will be just going for a straight win on this one. Uh, maybe one at a big price. Uh, Amarillo Sky for the Tizards. I think it's definitely got well in the shout to win this race. Um, well in the weights, got a good mark. And the market leader is off a very high mark of 155 with nearly top weight. So. I wouldn't be really having uh, Andy Defres uh, Defresny, I think is how you pronounce the name. But I'd be all over Amarillo Sky here, um, off a very good mark, six-year-old. Um, often do tend to go well on the Grand Annual. And yeah, I think I think seven to one is a good price. Um, so Amarillo Sky for Bren um, Brendan Powell and Colin Tizard, I think is definitely well in with a shout. One at a big price um, is Capucci Mix. Capucci Mix? Capucci Mix, that one. At 33 to 1. Um, definitely we're having a small poke on this one. Um, eight places with Sky. Um, I think you can get majority six or seven places, but I think Sky offer again the best um, places. Um, unfortunately, you don't get bog on this. Uh, but yeah, I think Capucha Mix is definitely one for the, uh, the Bromad Yard that will go well. Um, Gameford's on board, uh, which is a plus. He, he, he claims three. So off a good weight here, um, 
33 to 1 in my eyes is just well overpriced. Um, if you look back um, last year, I think Capucha Mix has finished sixth at Cheltenham um, behind Sky Pirates, who's running in this race as well. So I think if she's up there, I think she definitely has got a shout 100%. Um, off a very good mark as well. So, I mean, we're just hoping for a place here, really. So, Kapucha mix at 33 to 1 each way is definitely a one I'd be looking out for for a big price uh, place. Uh, Amarillo Sky at 7 to 1 to win. And for the final race of the day, it is the bumper. And my oh my, is Fasil Vega going to win? Um, I won't listen to Jamie Codd now after he's lost on Run Wild Fred. He's been big enough this American Mike for a lot a lot of times and for now I just you know you could just say why jockeys jockeys hype up horses. Um yeah, I wouldn't be touching American Mike. Uh, I'd be all over Fasil Vega. Um currently eleven to ten, I think is a steal of a price. She's very like her mother, Kavega, and um I definitely would be having just one bet on this race, and that is just Fasil Vega to straight win. So there are all the selections and the tips. Hopefully you guys um, will get some more winners. Um, hopefully none of these fall. <laughs> I can't think of any more reasons why we can have any worse luck. Um, just hoping for some more winners, better day, and hopefully tomorrow we'll be in profit. Um, fingers crossed, but yes. Uh, thanks guys for watching and I'll be, um, I'll be here for day three. Uh, tomorrow for sure. All right, guys, in a bit. See ya.